Hey folks, if you've got a vintage runabout or ski boat and it's equipped with a single lever throttle control where the throttle and shifter are combined in one unit, this video is for you. We're going to rebuild and restore a Morse MV style single lever throttle and shifter control unit. Stay tuned. Right now, one of our projects is restoring a 1972 Montgomery Ward Sea King, and it has the original 1972 Sea King 35 horsepower outboard, uh, which is actually a Chrysler outboard, but it is branded Sea King. Um, and with that outboard comes a single lever forward control unit. So that consists of the throttle and the uh, shifter in a single lever unit. And there's not a lot of information readily available on exactly how these work. Um, I see online there's a lot of forum posts with folks uh, asking, you know, should they keep them? Are they worth their salt? Uh, how do they work, etc., etc. So let's uh, do a quick little tutorial here and demystify the unit. So right off the bat, you see that we already have this unit disassembled. Um, it's in the process of being repainted and cleaned up and re-greased. So right now what you don't see on the table is the lever, and that's because I chose the moment when the lever was drying from uh, its fresh coat of paint to do this video. So I'm going to put a picture of what the lever looks like fully assembled right before we uh, took it apart to, to restore it, and that should make it look a little more familiar to you. So the basics of these systems are very simple. When they're assembled, you have a lever okay, that goes around this shaft right here. This is, of course, your throttle shaft. And you have your button, which engages and disengages your shifter. Popping it back apart, inside of the shell, nothing there, just a shell. It's a very simple device. You have two cams, a throttle cam and a shifter cam. Those cams engage with each other on rotation. You can see that you have your cam lobes here that engage with each other, sort of like gear teeth, and turn. When you want to throttle up the motor without having the shifter engaging, you would pull out this button, which it's a little bit difficult to do while it's disassembled and has not had a fresh coat of grease in probably 30 years, but there we go. So now it's dis disengaged, that would be if you were pulling it out. And now when you spin your throttle, you see that that cam rotates freely without, I might not have been doing that clear enough, without turning your throttle linkage. And then when you re-engage that button, whoo, yeah, that's tight. Now when you re-engage that button, you can see, or maybe you can't see, there we go, you can see that your shifter linkage is now engaged. And that's it. It literally is that simple. So lever out, cam is allowed to spin freely on that throttle shaft, or excuse me, on the uh, shifter shaft. Lock button engaged. Mm. Yep, tight. And it does. So, as you can see from all my struggles, this unit really needs to be taken apart, cleaned, and greased. Uh, now that we've already done all the paint, we've got to do the mechanical stuff. You can't do one without the other, or it's not a proper restoration. So, to disassemble, very easy process. Uh, I believe that should be 3 8 No, 7 sixteenths. Thank goodness for double-ended wrenches. Figure 
working on a 50 year old unit might as well use my 50 year old granddad's wrenches okay so here's your locking tab okay that holds your linkage bracket on and it is just a square bracket okay it goes on that's pretty simple let's get this guy out of the way so we don't drop something on it now once that linkage is disconnected all you have to do is pop that out and you're going to find that all those years and years of grease are in there pretty good um do the same thing on this one Oh, yep, he's on there tight. Well. That guy was on there good. All right, so now... Get that... 7 16 off the throttle linkage. And this one just has a washer. Note that it's a old star washer. And then your linkage is going to come out. All right, so that was really difficult to get that throttle lever off of there, but we did. So now, pull your cam assembly out. You'll notice on your cam assembly you have a spring ring right here. And there's another one that's up top that I already took off uh, right here. And these are very simple. They're split collars and they're designed to fit down inside the race like that and just act as a seat for that shaft. And then you have a spring washer right there. And you can see, I think you can see, uh, just how old and nasty that grease is. So you get all this cleaned up, um, get all the old grease off of it and put it back together. Okay, so we have all of our parts cleaned up. We're ready for reassembly. One of the things that I did not cover on disassembly that I will cover now is the existence of two different detent bearings or detent balls. The purpose behind a detent ball is to apply pressure in a specific spot on each one of these cam assemblies, basically, to keep it from spinning around in its seat. You'll, you'll get a better look at that when I have the whole thing assembled. Um, the, th the shifter detent spring and ball assembly are very, very easy to work with. We'll cover that in a moment. But the throttle detent ball and spring assembly uh, is not at all easy to work with. Um, this actually took me a couple hours to figure out how to do this. I did it all off camera, um, and because of how challenging it was, I'm not going to disassemble it and do it again, uh, because it probably took me, without exaggerating, 60 to 70 tries to get the ball in here. Um, guessing that when these were assembled at the factory 50 years ago, they probably had some form of specialized tooling that allowed them to compress the ball into the spring, into the, the uh, housing here, and absent that type of specialized tooling, the best thing I could come up with, it's going to be kind of hard to show you on camera, but the best thing I could come up with was I ground one side of a flathead screwdriver down to make it really, really slim uh, on one side. And I was able to use that. And essentially what I did is I put the house, spring housing, spring and bearing together, holding the shell upright like this so that gravity and a little dab of grease helped hold the ball onto the spring. I then took the, the uh, throttle shaft and I dropped it in, just got it seated, 
and then took my special screwdriver, slipped it in there, and applied a ton of pressure, because that is a very strong spring in there, to compress that bearing, pulled it tight, and then with the shell sitting in this pot right here, uh, using a couple pieces of rag to protect the finish, with it sitting in here, I was able to pull that back and then took a spark plug socket, dropped it on the shaft like that, and once I had the ball pulled back and held in place, I was able to tap that gently until it was seated. Um, now I'm an old manufacturing guy, so I have an idea of a couple of different ways that uh, specialized tooling would have would have fit the bill on this at the factory, but um, again, that just wasn't something I had access to, so did the best we could. Anyway, that's together. Let's move on. Um, we're going to put our shifter shaft and cam assembly together now, and that's simple as that. And then we're going to go ahead and put that into the back housing of the gear uh, the gearbox. And it's very difficult to mix up the holes because one is smaller than the other. So hard to mix that up. Um, before we can put that together, the second detent ball assembly, the smaller of the two, and again, fairly easy to work with, you're going to take your spring and you're going to put just a little dab of grease on it. Getting low on grease. Just a little, little dab of grease. Work it around in that spring. And then you're going to drop that into this hole. Like that. Now there are two holes in this gearbox housing where the shifter cam goes, shifter shaft goes. One of those holes goes all the way through. That is not the one that you're going to put the spring into. You're going to put the spring into the side that does not go all the way through. Okay. Then you're going to take your bearing, and if you have a little dab of grease on your bearing, you can use that to uh, basically help hold it in place like so. Okay. And then... Wipe that excess grease off my hands. And then you're going to take your assembled cam and shaft assembly and you're going to drop it in while holding that bearing down, which is pretty easy to do. Just start that in there and then Take a, a small, very small flathead screwdriver or, or a pick like this and just compress it like so until you can push the, the shaft through like that. Very easy. Okay. And now you have that seated. Now, to hold all that together, we're going to go ahead and put our arm on the back side. The shifter linkage arm is adjustable. The retaining clip that comes out has a little tab on the bottom right there and that tab fits into one of these two holes which on the top side are marked one and two. We also have two separate uh, mounting points here for your cable mount but that's that's uh, for when you're putting it back in the boat so we won't be dealing with that right now. But as far as your settings go we have holes one and two. So when this came out of my boat, and I'm going to be putting it back exactly the same way because uh, everything in my boat is remaining the same. So when it came out of my boat, it was on position two. So I'm going to get my 7 16 uh, bolt started here just to kind of hold it in together. Okay. And then... put those together and my little tab is in, I know that's hard to see, but it's in the second position the same way that it came out. So now I'll just screw that down, make sure it all stays together where it's supposed to be, 
and just give it a little snug, like so. Okay, easy. And there you go. So now your shifter shaft and cam assembly are mounted. Uh, one thing that I did not do in my rush to show you how to do this, I'm going to go back and correct that right now, because I did not apply grease to that shaft. I should have done that, but I was focused on the explanation. So that's as easy as just putting a little dab of grease on a toothbrush here and working it onto the shaft while holding the shaft out. And just give that shaft a spin kind of up and down, running the, the full travel of the of the shaft, rotating it around, and that'll get that'll get grease down in there. And now we're good. Okay, so detent ball, cam, shifter shaft, and linkage is all together for that shifter assembly. So now we move back over to the throttle side. We've already discussed the detent ball and the cam and shaft uh, assembly there. So now we need to put the, sh the outer shell onto the gearbox, onto the, the back of the gearbox. So to do that, you're gonna take your collar that we discussed earlier, you're gonna put that in the appropriate hole on the throttle side. And before we put all this together, we need to start thinking about our lubrication. So a little bit of grease goes a long way. And that's something that I have found over my maintenance and manufacturing years that too few people understand. A little grease goes a long way. When you're dealing with contact surfaces, mating surfaces, uh, the grease can only lubricate the surfaces where they're touching. If you're putting so much grease on, as many folks do, particularly doing, during a regular preventive maintenance when they're just ticking off their boxes and not actually paying attention to what they're doing, the only thing that does is make all the excess grease squeeze out everywhere and irritate the hell out of the next guy that has to come along behind and perform some maintenance. So don't be that guy. Just put just the amount of grease that you need and don't overdo it. There's just no need to have grease lubricating non-mating surfaces. It's just messy. Okay, so we have some grease in our cam teeth where they're gonna be meshing together. We have grease on both of our shafts. I already did this one earlier. We have grease on our detent bearing and a little bit of a film of grease around the outside of the cam here. Now, apply some grease to the inside of this collar. And one thing I recall from experience is that uh, this collar tends to present some fitment challenges with the uh, throttle shaft it it's a very very tight fit it's designed that way intentionally because they don't want uh, the grease that I'm putting in here right now to make its way out of the gearbox and they don't want incursion from water and atmosphere to make its way inside the gearbox that's the whole purpose behind these collars um, as well as providing a bearing surface for the shaft but because it is such a tight fit, it can be a little challenging sometimes to get the assembly together. Hopefully that grease will help. So I'm going to make sure that our cam teeth are lined up so that they can mate right into each other. And then we're just going to work everything until it seats in there. Um, where a rubber mallet may prove a little useful. Make sure that everything is coming out the way it's supposed to first. And a couple friendly taps there. Okay. Again, just, uh, you know, go slow. Don't, there's no reason to rush this. You don't want to 
run the risk of damaging something because you were in a hurry to, to get everything done. You know, make sure your teeth are, are staying, staying lined up the way they're supposed to. And there you go. And that's it for the gearbox. As far as putting that thing together, that's all good. So now, before I put my throttle linkage on, I'm going to go ahead and put my screws back in to hold the back side of the gearbox to the shell. Um, I want to go ahead and do that so that I don't have any concerns with things popping apart on me when I'm not ready for them to do so. Okay, now when we go to put our throttle linkage back on, we want to make sure that we have the throttle and shifter linkage uh, oriented to each other the same way that they came off. Okay, so having referenced our uh, assembly picture back before we took the unit apart, I can see that uh, with everything lined up the way it's supposed to be, I'm going to be putting my throttle linkage on in this position. Like so. Putting on my lock washer and bolt. And you know what I just realized? Is that I forgot another thing in the course of showing you all the work that I'm doing. I completely forgot to put my spring washer on the throttle shaft. In reality, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, but I'm going to hang on to that because it might be something I need to go back and do at a later date. We'll see. Whew. Okay, that right there was inadvertently the first um, turn of the throttle shaft that I have done since putting that detent ball in. And boy, I can tell you that already feels fantastic. The way that popped right in there. Oh, that's nice. Yep, that's exactly the way it should be working. So, beautiful. Okay, um, if I find when I put it in the boat that I need to make adjustments to my linkage positions, I'll. I'll do that on installation. Um, again, everybody's setup is going to be slightly different. So, there we go. That is our housing for our remainder of our screws in. Now that we're at a, a good point on all that. A good snug. Yeah. Sometimes making these how to videos, it's hard to be perfect on everything. You're trying to think about what you want to show the audience and not necessarily focused on all the little details that you would be focused on if you were doing this on the bench for a client or something else um, so it's easy to forget little things but you know the important thing is go back double check your work make sure everything is done properly in the case of that spring washer um, I'm not gonna worry about it right now it's its sole function really is to provide uh, tension between the shaft and the gearbox housing um, it's not anything that I foresee being problematic, so I'm not going to worry about it. So now I do just want to kind of move things around a bit because I want to get that grease that we put in there uh, moving. Just kind of get things worked in. But that, that already feels much, much better than it did uh, prior to all this work. Okay, uh, a couple notes on the finishing of the uh, throttle lever and ball. Um, 
I believe back in the day when these were made and and uh, put onto the boats, I believe that these components were powder coated. Um, I have not gone to that length. So what I used was uh, some good old fashioned spray and clear coat. Um, the ball, find a bolt that fits the threads of the ball and you have an easy to work with uh, paint tool. And then everything else was just, uh, you know, handled accordingly and painted and clear coated to make it look nice. This is getting real yucky looking because my greasy fingers have been all over it. But um, once it, once you clean it up, that clear coat does polish up nice. So I'll, I'll give that a really good cleaning once I'm done handling everything. Um, so let's start the final assembly on all of this. We'll start by putting our ball on the top of our lever and just give that a little snug like so. Okay. And I'm going to start, I know that I'm in the, uh, I know that I'm in the mid position where everything is set. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my throttle lever right at that 12 o'clock position. Set screw never came off the Allen wrench that I removed it with. I even used the Allen wrench to wire wheel the set screw. So we'll just put that right back where it came from. Snug that down and just be careful not to let your tools slip and damage that nice finish that you have put onto your controls. You'd be doing it all over again. I actually have a small nick already in the uh, gearbox shell here, this red shell. So I'm going to have to go back at a later date and do a slight touch up on it. And that's just from all the work I've been doing and kind of caught something and took a very tiny little nick out of the paint. Okay, so now we're going to put the backing plate on. That already looks real nice. Using our original screws that we came with. And uh, they all cleaned up real nice, so I was very happy not to have to replace actually any of the hardware, um, any of the fasteners that were on this assemblage. Okay, and there we go. Uh, I'm going to snug those down off camera because i got to go hunt down the right size wrench. Um, all right, a uh, quick little modification here. Um, I actually, after going back and looking at my, uh, my setup, as I was mentioning earlier about how uh, everybody's setup is going to be different, I realized that I put this throttle lever in the wrong position. It actually needs to be this way in order to uh, operate properly with the full range of travel. So just throwing this in on the video as a quick little update to show that for my application, this is the proper orientation of that lever, like so. Okay. So, there you go. And that is the completed product. I'm pretty happy with how it came out, and uh, I hope that this video has helped others out there to understand how all this works and how relatively easy it is to rebuild and restore. Take care.